Hi, welcome to another episode of So Sensible. Today we're gonna to make a puff seat cushion. Earlier this month, I worked on a puff quilt and it was a little tricky, but I love how it turned out. So I thought this would be a great gift for Father's Day or just to give your house a pop of fun. For this project, we will be using repurposed corduroy pants and you can use any kind of fabric you want. You can use cotton. I prefer corduroy. I just love the way it feels, the texture, and uh, just, just the way it looks at the end. So I, for, for this project, you will need the puff fronts and the puff back, which for this, you can use any size you want. You can use four inches, you can use five inches. For this particular one, I decided to go with the uh, nine and a half bubble. And so you can just cut out a square and then pin and cut out the pattern, or you can use a rotary cutter. And then this one is the backing to the puff. And this is eight and a half. As you can see, it's just a little bit smaller. Uh, I wanted to have it so that it would have a 16 inch back. So the backing is 16 and a half. And I'm gonna have, need four of these puffs. Okay, and you can kind of see what that's gonna look like. This isn't stuffed yet, but this is an eight inch eight inch, eight and a half inch puff, because you're gonna leave an extra quarter inch for sewing, okay? All right, so the first thing you're gonna do is you need to take apart the pants. So that's pretty simple. You're just gonna start from the hem and you're gonna now see the hem, so if you look here, the hem's pushed this way. So I'm gonna make it easy on myself and just cut on this side. Okay, so see that? So we've got the hem over here, we've got the hem over here. And you're just going to, well, I'm gonna be kind of cheap about this. So I'm gonna get it as far as I can down. I'm gonna pin it into place. So it's pinned and I'm just gonna cut it out. Okay, so next what you're going to do is you're going to want to pin each of these corners to the backing. So you're just gonna line it up. Okay, so it should look like this. So it's loose here loose all around and then what you're going to do is you're going to kind of smooth out the fabric and then see how you have that little ripple right there you're going to this is how, at least this is how I do it I'm sure there's different ways to do it you're going to smooth out the ripple and then you're going to push it down so that it looks kind of like like that and then you're going to pin it don't get the tablecloth like this. I don't know if you can see that. Okay. All right, so now we have it all pinned. It's pinned in every corner first, and then you get the fold in the middle and pin that down like so. And you can see it's kind of already looking like a puff. Okay. You're gonna bring it over to the machine. You're just gonna start wherever and you're gonna sew around the entire piece. I know, you're thinking, wait a minute, how are we gonna get the filling in there? I'll show you. You're just gonna be using a quarter inch stitch. All right, so you have the one puff done, and what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to make four of these. Here's another one. And you're going to sew, you're gonna figure out how you like them and you're gonna then sew them together like so. All right. 
So just like a regular quilt square, you're gonna make sure all the puffs out of the way so that you don't accidentally catch anything that you don't want in there. And then you're just going to pin it together. You're just gonna stitch it right here. Uh, try to keep in mind you do have a stitch right here and maybe do a wider stitch just so that you make sure to not expose that seam with the finished project. So this is the design that I made, the coloring that I wanted. And so once again, I'm gonna put the two and the two together and I'm gonna pin them. I'm gonna be careful to make sure the seam is nice when I pin together. That's probably the most important part because it makes it look oh so pretty. Let's see. And I'm just gonna bring it over to the machine and I'm gonna stitch from one end to the other. Okay, so there we have it. And you've got your four puffs. And actually, I'm still not gonna stuff them yet. I'm going to put the backing on first. So I'm gonna just take this and I'm gonna put the pretty side, this is my backing, and I'm gonna put it right on top. Actually, I'm gonna pin the puffness away so that it doesn't get in my way. Cause that would really stink, wouldn't it? Okay. So I'm just gonna pin around the entire edge and I'm going to leave an opening right here. I think I can get, let's see, like this much. I think I'm gonna leave an opening this big I'm just gonna take a ribbon and I'm gonna put it right here and I'm gonna pin it into place so it doesn't shift. And that's where I'm gonna remember to be extra careful that I make sure I catch that ribbon. Here's the back and here's, well, here's the backing and then here's your puffs. And so what you're gonna, and I put extra pins right here to make sure that I remember that there's a ribbon there so I don't lose it, accidentally forget to do it. You can, if, if you, that happens, that's okay. You just seam rip it and you can put the ribbon back in again. Of course, the greatest fear of all seamstresses and tailors is that you have to seam rip it and go and fix it and nobody likes doing that. So, uh, I'm just gonna start around here and I'm gonna go all the way around the edge and end right here so that I can flip it inside out. Okay, so I have it like this. First what I'm gonna do is flip it inside out. Make sure I caught everything and that everything looks right. Take all the pins out. Looks good, right? So I just realized as I was doing this, the reason why I do my quilts like this with the fold over method is because you can really, you can see the puffs and it's a lot easier to kind of keep grasp of what's going on. But I'm gonna keep, keep going and see how it turns out. So what we're gonna do here with enclosing it like this is we're gonna flip it back inside out and then we're gonna stuff everything. To fill the puffs, you're going to take your scissors and you are going to separate the back from the corduroy 
and you're just going to cut a line. And you could do a seam ripper if you're a little scared. And don't cut it too big because you have to hand stitch this shut. And, but you just want to make sure you're only cutting one side. You're gonna cut all the puffs that you need. And then you're gonna take your stuffing. You're just gonna fill it in. All right, so I've stuffed everything and you kind of have to be like a cat and just kind of feel it out and see if there's more stuffing needed somewhere or what. Uh, these feel right. And um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hand stitch these shut. All right, so you can see the slits right here. So what you're just gonna do is, I like to take the uh, double knotted, I guess, double knotted thread. I guess I don't know what it's called. And then I like to, I don't know if you can see this. Instead of, I do tie a knot, but then what I do is I thread it through so that it has an extra nice knot. And then you're just going to do it like you would imagine. You're gonna pinch it together, like so. And then you're just gonna go to work. You can do a straight stitch, you can do a back stitch. Uh, I just like to do this really simple one. Speeds up the process a lot. And it kind of keeps it together. I know what you're thinking, boy, this is boring. But if you were just sitting and watching TV, this would be a fun little activity to do. All right, so they're all sewn together. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip it inside out and see what we got. I'm gonna be extra careful because it's overstuffed. I don't wanna rip the, we don't wanna rip the seam. If we rip the seam, it'll be okay, but let's try not to. This is why I feel like the fold over, I don't know what that seam's called. But that's why I feel like this is better. But this is gonna be fine, it'll save us a little step. Look at that, I didn't even pull a seam once. Perfect. So look at that. Now we just need to fold over the edges and pin them and then sew them and you're done. Let's do it. Okay, so we have it pinned together and we're just gonna stitch along the seam. And voila, we have it. We have our seat cushion. And what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna take some embroidery floss and maybe make a little tie right here and there, just like you would tie a quilt. And that will add to some durability. But the fun thing about this, is you can just pop it in the washer anytime you want. I uh, get a lot, if you get, like in my house, I have cats and they would just love this. So you can just throw it in the washer and it's also a really nice cushion that adds a lot of color to the room. So I hope you loved my tutorial and I hope to see you next time on So Sensible. Uh, I'm going to be using recycled. Yeah, this is really interesting. Get the shot on this. Thread in the needle, baby. <laughs> With my old lady eyes. Watch her thread the needle and tie a knot. Somebody's gonna be like, you were rushed towards the end. <laughs>